Good morning. It's wonderful to see you today. Thank you for being with us. Uh, if you will please register your attendance with us on the little blue pads that are closest to the aisle and then pass it down so the people on the end get a chance. And I need to tell you something if you're a regular Duck Church person. If you're a regular Duck Church person and you get to the pew pad first and you only write your name, that's exactly what everyone else on the aisle is going to do. <laughs> and what we hope to do with these pew pads is have people share with us some contact information. <laughs> so I know that you know I have your phone number if you're a Duck Church person, but we will not get any other phone numbers if you don't go ahead and write your phone number, your email, and your address down. I can't say this every Sunday because it's a little unseemly, so just remember this. Thank you. It's so good to see you. Look at these Thanksgiving bags. Such bounty we bring to people in Dare County. It's hard to believe that our neighbors won't have Thanksgiving dinner without us, but there are so many that that's just the way it is. There's just not enough money in the house to provide a feast. They do well just to sort of keep the peanut butter, the bread, and the spam going. That's just the truth. Uh, you may remember those days. I do. I came home from school one night when uh, I was about 20 years old, and I said, what's for dinner, dear? And she said, we're having grits. And I said, good, I love grits. Uh, I don't smell any bacon. She said, that's because there's not any. I said, fine. So we're just having toast and jelly with our grits. She said, nope, there's no bread either. It's just grits. You know, we all know what it's like sometimes when the money ends before the month does. So thank you for helping those who find themselves in need this season. Now, Let's see. I have sanctified clipboards for you. Uh, the first is Advent candle lighting. And so if you would like to light the Advent wreath at one of the service, then uh, if you'll sign up for that, that'll be great. Uh, when it gets to the back row, Jack, will you send it over to the other side? Now, these other sanctified clipboards... I've got one for each row, so you won't have to do that at the back. This is the room in the end, sign up. It's getting time for us to take care of our homeless neighbors. And if you'll sign up for that, that'll be good. It, they won't be sleeping in the church this year. They have a new facility uh, that they'll be using, which is really nice. There we are. And this is for helping decorate and undecorate the church. All righty. John, you'll need to climb a ladder for that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you, Joel. Let's see. This afternoon, there are the Way Forward meetings from 2 to 4. Also, next Sunday is the second half of those from 2 to 4. Love for you to join us uh, if you can. Who would you like for us to be remembering in prayer today? Is there anyone on this side? Yes, Leanne. Woo-hoo. Honeymoon return. All right. Anyone else on the side? Yes. Thank you. David? Thank you. Thank you. Ann Bynum. Thank you. Anyone on this side? Yes? Sam Russell. Sam Russell. Thank you. Anyone else on this side? Anyone from the choir? Yes, Dorothy. Oh, there was affected by gun violence. Gun violence. Thank you. Alex. Alex. Let's bow in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that uh, you bless us in so many ways that we get to enjoy. And one of the most wonderful things that we enjoy is being able to share with others. Thank you for that gift and that grace. We pray that you bless all those that we pray for today, those who are sick, those who are poor, 
those who are in distress and need. We pray that you surround and bless them with a sense of your loving care and that you use us any way you can to be a blessing to them. We pray for our families, Lord. We pray that you give them grace, strength, courage, protection. We ask now, Lord, that you bless us as we worship you. Let it rise up within our souls by the grace of your Holy Spirit and rise to heaven. Amen. The hymn is All Things Bright and Beautiful, number 147. turn in your boards into the prayer of confession as we confess our sins to Almighty God. Let us pray. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy, O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Please continue in silent confession.
Gracious Heavenly Father, absolve thy people from their offenses, which by our frailty we have committed. Grant that by the grace and power of your Holy Spirit, we might be forgiven for those sins which we confess before thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come to the mission moment now. We have a Zoe video for you. We took this video when we were uh, in Rwanda in February. It's a, a scene in a marketplace. Uh, it looks beautiful, but I can still remember the odor. It was special. Don't you want to go with us to Rwanda in February? We have two more spaces available if you'd like to come. Uh, we have uh, sponsored very nearly all the orphans that we wanted to sponsor this year. So we've done a tremendous job. We've sponsored about 204. Our goal is 225. And you have just done a tremendous job with that, so thank you so much. If you would like to sponsor one of the remaining ones, it takes $350 to put one orphan through the three-year program. And so there's a little card in the pew rack that says Zoe on it. Just uh, fill that out and put it in the offering plate if you would like to sponsor an orphan. Or you can take the card home with you if you want to pray about it and uh, sponsor one of those that needs us so much. Let's watch this. If the ushers will come forward, we'll receive the morning tithes and offerings.
Father, you have poured out so many blessings on us. We give you thanks and honor, worship and thanksgiving. We thank you that we can make a difference in the lives of those who are hungry in body and soul and spirit here on the beach and throughout the world. Bless these gifts and the givers in Jesus' name. Amen. The hymn in the thin black volume is 2191. Eternal Father is strong to save.
invite you to exchange signs of love and peace with one another. As you are standing in, before Marie slips out, no, 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 Marie, don't slip out. Oh, she, there she goes. Marie uh, was able to play that Bach concerto with Suzette. Uh, if you've never tried to play Bach, uh, even the easy Bach is too hard for yours truly. I cannot imagine being able to do what Suzette and Marie did. They practiced for hours to do it for you and to the glory of God. So when you see Marie, give her some loving. Now let us affirm what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The setting for the scripture today is about 1050 BC. It's during the period of the judges. So if you're familiar with your Old Testament and you ever read the strange book of Judges, and it is strange in so many ways uh, and really faith inspiring at the same time, this happens during the time of the judges before Israel had a king. Um, Hear now the reading of the word. In the days when the judges or judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife was Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malan and Chilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. When they had lived there about ten years, both Malan and Chilion also died, so that the woman was left without her two sons 
and without her husband. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I'm too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, and even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters. It has been far more bitter for me than for you. Because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud again. Orpha kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So Ruth said to so Naomi said to Ruth, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you or to refrain from following you. For where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, there I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. May the Lord do this and more to me as well, if even death parts me from you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we're giving thanks for our family and friends. As I thought about family and friends, I thought about the fact that we tend to think of family and friends as being a fixed group of people especially family, a fixed group, stays the same. But you know, I wonder when I go to weddings or when I am the pastor at weddings and I see seven groomsmen and seven bridesmaids, I wonder on the bride and groom's 25th wedding anniversary, how many of those bridesmaids and groomsmen's addresses will they still have? Maybe half. But you know, at that moment in their lives when they're getting married, this is the group that's most important to them. Some of the group changes. Some of the group remains the same. Instead of family and friends being fixed, I think maybe family and friends are a little more like a constellation gleaming bright and beautiful in the night sky. It moves slowly, but it moves. I'll be right back.
I'm sorry. I sent the ushers last week, and it didn't work, so I went myself this week. We'll see if that helps any. Isn't it wonderful that our church is so loving and happy to see each other that they greet each other in loud voices (laughs) constantly? It really is a good church. So we think about the relationships that Naomi has. Naomi has relationship with her husband, with her two sons, with their wives. She has a relationship with God, and she has a relationship with their family's wealth. In this brief history, we see that she loses most of this in a 10-year period. You know, for a while, things went well. Naomi and her husband, Elimelech, were well off in Bethlehem. A famine came, and I bet they thought they were the smart ones, proactive. They're not going to sit around in Bethlehem while there's a famine raging. No, they've heard there's plenty of crops, plenty of good food in Moab, and they're headed there. And so they have the means to go, they have the health to be able to travel, and they go to improve their lot in life. They're a little wiser than their friends and family who stay, only things don't really go so well for these adventuresome people. They get there. And before long, Elimelech dies. The sons have grown over a 10-year period. They've taken wives, and then the sons die. I invite you to think about what this must have been like for Naomi. Naomi's in a foreign land. She's in a foreign land. And she lays her husband to rest. No other relatives there. And then one son dies, and she doesn't know how she'll go on. And then the last son dies, and there's nothing left but responsibility. She's alone, except for her two daughters-in-law, who now look to her as the head of the family, and she has essentially no means of supporting them. There are no men left to make a livelihood, and these were not the days when widows would go back to uh, college and to get a degree in nursing. They were in bad shape. She decides she's got to go back to Bethlehem. So I suppose they pack up what they have left, which is not much. They sell what they can't take, and they head out. They get about a day's journey, and Naomi realizes she's doing Ruth and Orpah a disservice. Can you imagine how much they love their mother-in-law? And can you imagine what a wonderful mother-in-law she must have been for them to love her so much? They had mothers in Moab, but they chose out of faithfulness and out of love to go with Naomi. They get on the road, and Naomi realizes this is not right. It's not right. She can't take them away from their home. She can't take them away from their town. And she says to them, it's wonderful of you to come with me. Thank you. Thank you. I love you so much. But you have to go back now. You cannot stay with me. I have nothing to offer you. There's no life for you with me. You have to go back home. You can't come with me. I realize that now. Please go back home to your mothers. And they weep and they cry and they say, we're not going. And she says, but you must. You have to go. You cannot come with me. You must go home. 
And so Orpah reluctantly obeys her mother-in-law, which was the right thing to do. Orpah does the right thing. She obeys her mother-in-law, her mother-in-law's earnest and loving entreaty. They embrace, they kiss, they cry, she leaves. And then Ruth clings to Naomi and will not let her go. Naomi says to Ruth, you have to go. Go catch up with your sister-in-law. And then there's this beautiful, beautiful passage of scripture that some of you had at your weddings. And she looks at her mother-in-law and she says, entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following you, from whether thou goest, I shall go also. Thy people shall be my people. Thy God, my God. And where thou art buried, I shall be buried also. And none but death shall part me from thee. And so, Naomi says nothing more. She just turns and starts walking. She is not going to encourage Ruth to do this thing that is not in Ruth's self-interest. What love in this family. They go to Bethlehem. And you know that in Bethlehem, when Naomi gets there, Her friends and family greet her. It's been more than 10 years since she left. She used to be wealthy and beautiful. Now, she is neither. You know, I don't know about you, but when I've been on a long trip, before I walk in the door at home, I go to an airport bathroom or somewhere, I look in the mirror, I comb my hair, I brush my teeth, I squish and gargle a little, I might put on a little bit of Elizabeth's favorite cologne, I make sure I'm looking pretty good, and then I walk in the door at home. You ever do that? I think most people do. There was no airport bathroom for Naomi and Ruth only a dusty road that went up about 2,000 feet. By the time they walked into Bethlehem, they were bedraggled, dusty, tired, no doubt, hungry. And here they are. What do we see here? We see that Naomi says to Ruth, God has turned against me. I don't know why, but clearly he has because this kind of disaster couldn't otherwise happen. I think all of us have that feeling from time to time when things go very wrong in our lives. We look up to heaven and we say, Did I do something to cause this to happen? Did I do something to bring this upon myself? Ruth believes that God has turned against her. He hasn't. It's just that people die. Everyone does. It's not a special punishment. It's just part of being human. And sometimes it happens much, much too soon. The story of Ruth is a story of change in family and in friendship. 
It teaches us to love our family and friends while we have them. It teaches us to love our family and friends while we may, to cherish them and to give thanks for them because they do not belong to us. They enter our lives for a season, and then they're gone. And we do not know how long or how short that season is. And so we cherish our family and friends while we have them. And we embrace the changing constellation. I think of sonnet number 73. Is that one of your favorites? It's my very favorite. Shakespeare compares his life, nearing its end, to the waning season of fall giving way to winter, when he was so recently in his prime, like summer. He compares himself to twilight before night comes, and to the last glowing embers of a once glorious and blazing fire. And then comes the couplet. That time of year when thou mayest in me behold when yellow leaves or none or few shake against the cold bare ruined choirs where late the sweet bird sang. In me thou seest the twilight of such day as after sunset fadeth in the west which by and by black night doth take away death's second self that seals up all in rest. In me thou seest the glowing of such fire that on the ashes of his youth doth lie as the deathbed whereon it must expire consumed with that which it was nourished by. This thou perceivest, which makes thy love more strong, to love that well, which thou must leave ere long. Today, we give thanks for our family and friends. Go home, write letters. Make phone calls. Buy gifts. Celebrate and give thanks for your family and friends while you have them. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The closing hymn is number 102. Now thank we all our God.
this benediction. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the throne of grace with exceeding joy, unto the only wise God be honor, glory, dominion, and power, and may the love of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen.